did you know in our city, uh, this is the city, the birthplace of the new evangelization movement in North America. They have huge conferences over the years to mobilize Catholics especially to think about evangelizing. And then um, also in our city for now many years, 20 or 25 years or so now, we have Catholic Christian Outreach, which is a powerful movement of reaching out to campuses, university and college campuses across our nation. It's based here in Ottawa. Net Ministries, which is a huge ministry sending out teams of college university kids in their gap year often to do evangelism all across Canada on high school campuses across the nation is based here in Orleans and Ottawa. Yeah, I mean, many of us don't know how powerfully God's been moving. One of the things that I would say, um, there's probably a number of things I could continue to mention, but Companions of the Cross is an order founded here in Ottawa uh, with wonderful priests, and of which Father Rob is, is one of them. And um, it's worth getting to know um, these, these leaders in our city. We're grateful for a wonderful archbishop who leads the Catholic Church in our city. And with his blessing, with his encouragement, uh, we're in, uh, glad to introduce to you Father Rob Arsenal. Well, again, uh, good morning to you all. So Rob Arsenault, so for some from the East Coast, you know right away, Summerside, Prince Edward Island, that's where I'm from. But my dad was military, so I actually grew up on the West Coast in British Columbia and then made Kingston more or less my home. That's where my family stayed there. So we're pretty much, you know, pretty Canadian. Good Catholic family. What does good Catholic family mean? Well, it means uh, catechized and received all our sacraments. We certainly went to church, but probably would describe ourselves as, as, as cultural Catholics. That started to change in the 80s when my parents got involved with something called a marriage encounter. And for my siblings and I, we got involved with core ministry. And through that, I was prayed with for the first time. And, and that was a, a changer for me. Now, this is where it's supposed to go, this nice trajectory right up into heaven, right? Well, it was an early beginning of a conversion. God was real. That part I did learn. And if God was real, then there could be a real call from God. Amen? So that's when that sense of pursuing a vocation, which was very, very counter to most of my friends. They just, just they were kind of giving up on the church right about that time, back in the 80s. But I continued to pursue it. I honestly didn't think I would last a year. I can relate to our first speaker this morning. At least he could play guitar. I couldn't even do that. But I show up in, in school and I start to learn more about my faith, actually develop a prayer life and, and, and start to pursue forward. And as very graciously Richard was mentioning, the Companions of the Cross were just starting to come together. It was just a theory. It was a concept. But if anyone was around St. Mary's at that time where Father Bob was, that was a parish that was explosively alive. It was a parish that was open to the Spirit. And many of us young guys said, well, I don't know if I want to be a priest, if I could be a priest like this, this, this could be something. So I got ordained in the well, mid-90s, and that was a heady time. That's about the same time Catholic Christian Outreach started. It's about the same time Net Ministries, at least in Canada, got underway. And it all looked possible. There was great potential. John Paul II was still the Holy Father, and we didn't understand him, but it was good that he was there. And somehow it all seemed like it was, it was going to come together. Well, we hit the millennia. And it, I don't know, Y2K was a bit of a wash, amen? <laughs> what was that about? And then darker things. 9-11. Economic turndown. Like it, was, it was a difficult time, and in, within our own faith, yes, there were, there were problems and, and, and scandals. And so we almost came to this place where I think many of us thought, well, if I can't do it by proclamation and hard work, maybe structure, maybe programming. And there's a number of things that took place after that time. Um, you ever heard of Amazing Parish? This is something, uh, Patrick Lincioni, again, a business leader who did some really great stuff. And, and, uh, and a priest actually out, out east, uh, James Mallon, some divine renovation. I was actually around at that time. I was his neighboring parish. And this idea of coming up with a plan and following that plan in the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's hard. 
It's a lot harder than I think we understood. I speak for myself here. I didn't really know all of what I was getting into. And I was honest, I was getting a little bit worn down. And then something came along. It was um, COVID. We've already mentioned it. I've always said that COVID wasn't really our problem. I just think it accelerated all our other problems. I came out of the back of that. And again, I don't think despair, that's a little bit too strong. But maybe like a grim determination. Maybe this is as good as it gets. Maybe this is it. Like you get on the wrong side of 50. This is an old joke of mine. Whenever I say my age in public, I generally expect a little gasp of surprise. So let's try that again. When you get on the wrong side of 50, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfectly well preserved. When you start thinking, is this, is this it? And I'll, I'll keep doing it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't know I hadn't seen any hope. I saw a great potential, but just not much fruit. And what happened was uh, through uh, NET, uh, wasn't NET, I'm sorry, it was Alpha Canada invited us to go to the conference in London, England. Has anyone been there? Dude, it's a, really, it's a marvelous conference. And you're with 5,000 other Christian leaders from around the world. It's very, very uplifting. And often but humbling. These people are dealing with a lot more than, than a sort of secularism. It's persecution. And yet they're able to somehow proclaim the gospel in a credible way. And so kind of absorbing all of that and I still remember, it was just this last year, only just coming up on a year anniversary. And what they had, the opening night, we're at the Albert Hall, 5,000 of us, and the great, great praise worship and wonderful open talk at Nikki Gumbel's there and Tippa and all that stuff. It's just great stuff. And what they had was some speakers from Ashbury, you know, the Kentucky. Now, that had only happened a month before. That was pretty impressive. I don't know who the keynote was supposed to be that night, but that had all shifted. Like even just watching that happen was impressive. But they had this guy, one of their professors, does a doctorate in renewal, and he gets up. That's pretty good content. And then all these young people, they had five of the young people who had, again, less programming than what we already experienced this morning. Praise and worship, basic teaching, 16 days of renewal. Hundreds of thousands of people touched, global impact. Now, who here is under 30? So I'll just apologize ahead of time. I see all these young people come up on stage and I'm expecting, a bit cynical still, like totally Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they got up and they gave the most powerful, beautiful wisdom I'd ever seen. I felt like these kids had, had seen a piece of heaven and all they wanted was more people to experience what they'd experienced. I was very moved by it. Now, I'm trying to, paint a kind of a, a movement here because you can imagine this 5,000 of us we just heard a, a, an amazing witness and you're expecting the roof to blow off but they didn't do it they sent one person out with a guitar they played a simple hymn and said Lord we just want to come before you humble and open and so I'm up there up, up, up there the, the royal box was there I wasn't in there I was over there and I'm just, just humble. Lord, I'm tired. Maybe just a little cynical. I don't know where it's, I'm seeing the potential. I'm not seeing the fruit. And they said, you know, at a certain point, they said, just, just pray for a word. Now, some people have powerful words and I'm a bit envious. They see visions. That's beautiful stuff. Great words of consolation. That's beautiful stuff. I've got like the Chevy and palace spirituality when it comes to that. <laughs> it's really big. So pain. Give me a word. Give me a word. <laughs> and it felt the Lord put in my heart. He said, it's not going to be like it was. Now, again, I wanted to hear a word about renewal in the church. I want to hear renewal in the world, but no, it was for me. It's not going to be the way that it was. And it's just simple, but it took root. Right. So I come back and, and again, it's just amazing. Lots of people, lots to think about. And it's funny, like these last year, things haven't been the way they were. We seem to finally have gotten ourselves out of COVID in my parish. We have something called right of Christian initiation for adults. We normally have one or two people. We have 16. Yeah. I know, amazing. And then we had our catechetical programming. Usually we get around 11 or 12. We're just under 50. 
These people were, and what I'm seeing now is I've not seen in 30 years as a priest. I have people walking in the door and they're basically saying, I need God in my life. Can you help me? Like just that basic, not, not drawing from other parishes or, but actually people are literally finding us somehow. I have good staff. We have a, we have a, a thing, but what I want to try to say here, it's not so much like the, the programming. It's not the kind of the vision casting. It just seems like, do we have any C.S. Lewis fans here? Aslam's on the move. Aslam's on the move, right? <laughs> and he's just touching hearts. We have an expression for it. I also worked with the bishop's office a little bit. And we have a word, early rains. And we just got a sense of it. There's a, a young woman here with us, Lindsay. And she, she, got that, she kind of got that sense too, that this is the early rains. That God is sending a time for planting and then we heard that the prophecy of the waterfall of God's grace and mercy. That's coming. This is a preparation for us to get ready. At Easter time, we had a packed house. Good Friday, we're right out the door. And we were thinking, this is really good. And then I thought, what if it was every Sunday? And who are we not getting to? And how can we do it better? Wouldn't it be an amazing thing? All the problems and all the struggles, and we all know them. But this time, it's not the church that's in trouble. That's 30 years ago, 40 years ago. That's the end of Christendom. What if secularism is in trouble? You know, this whole idea that, that it was just going to get better and we're all going to get along and then we just vote, you know, and all that stuff. And the world's just going to get better and better and more inclusive. And then we all end up in a Star Trek episode. Hey, we've seen the future. What if that's what's in trouble? I don't know what people are doing. I'm not saying all of them are coming back to church. Oh, I could say that some of them are. And I can't even tell you this is revival. It's too soon for that. I can't even claim a trend. I don't, I don't know. These are still ones and twos. But I'm seeing things I have not seen before. I'm experiencing fruit that I have not experienced. That I, have no, I can't credit to myself. I just really believe God is moving. If God's moving in our church, I think he's moving in many churches. I think those places that are open, that are receptive, that are willing, that have been year after year after year, the seeds are now coming to fruition. Praise God. Now, will we see all of it? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm seeing some of it, and I'm a lot more encouraged than I was. So that's my prayer. I want to finish with that. I just wanted to say, it's not just... Certainly within the Catholic faith, it's in the evangelicals, among Protestant churches. I think those that are open and their hands are closed are receiving early rains. Praise God, let's send more. Amen.